All right, September 22nd in London. We expect 90,000 at Wembley for Alexander Povetkin, and this is no, you know, booby prize. This is a legitimate, dangerous fight. Dangerous Another enough one. that Another people one. are saying, you're taking a chance. You're risking this potential unification Super Bowl fight by taking on this difficult challenger. Santa Cruz takes home the decision in the end. I really thought you could have made a case for Mares this time around. He wants a trilogy. I don't think we'll see it, though. But one thing we did see, Tommy, two guys perfectly made for each other in the same mold as Barrera, Morales, Vasquez, Marquez, and the great Mexican rivalries in history. Here's the thing. The guys that were the all-time best of all time, they wanted to leave no doubt that they were the best. Floyd has left a little bit of doubt. Absolutely, with yes. I don't doubt his talent. I think he would have beaten sure. anybody in his era. But when you leave that doubt, you, get, you pay the price for that. He's been yeah. all about the money. Yeah. Look, Ray, this was a fun fight. We got the result that we expected, but it came in a way that we never thought. And that's because Madonna came out and he really pushed the pace. He wasn't afraid to fight dirty, cut off the ring, did all the things that we talked about in whatever could be the blueprint to give Floyd a tough fight. Madonna did that. So if you're going to give those close rounds where not a lot happened to Sergey Kovalev, the thing you have to ask yourself is what did he do to win those rounds? <laughs> a loss for Johnson against Cejudo and a chance to beat him in a trilogy could be the best thing for his long-term legacy and how we remember him because it would humanize him. That's one thing that Floyd Mayweather didn't have. He beat the game in boxing. He made us all hate him and wanted to see him lose, but he was never human. He was human outside the ring, never human inside of it. It would give DJ a chance to have his GSP, Matt Sarah moment, and, and dig deep and come yeah. back from something and it would certainly give some juice to the to the flyweight division that we're talking about doesn't move the needle, doesn't move my needle. It uh, showed me a lot, Jim. Look, when you're talking about Selby, big for the featherweight division, in this fight against Montiel, he's going to have a four and a half inch height advantage against Gradovic, though, who really applies pressure, tries to get in your living room from the opening bell. I really like what Selby did in terms of poise, boxed off of that jab, but wasn't afraid to dig in and trade when he had to. And I thought even with a guy coming forward this whole fight, Selby outclassed him. That fight ended early because of a cut, but it, it really announced Selby that this is a player. This is a guy with a title. Like to see what he can do moving forward. Got a good matchup here where yep. he's really going to get a chance to show that. Spence Crawford has that potential. Of course, we need to see Errol move the chains on Saturday against Ocampo. I predict an early knockout, and I hope the groundswell only continues to get the money fights our welterweight that the fans deserve. Jim, it comes down to two things, activity and size, because we know Daniel Gill, the former titleist at 160, as a guy who's very aggressive, comes forward, throws a lot of punches, can mix the boxing with the punching, but it's the activity for him that makes him dangerous. How much longer do you want to do this? Because I, I use the word natural. I use the word fun for you. you got a big smile on your face. Yeah. This, this is a long-term career move. Keith, you've showcased something different in each of your fights. You know, we've seen your power against Julio Diaz, your chin against Diego Chavez, your ability to box against Leonard Bundu. Right now, where do you rank yourself among the pound-for-pound -pound best welterweights in the world? He's the right guy for this moment for him. I just don't have the confidence that with his style, that he can come over the top and defeat Floyd Mayweather because Mayweather's on this level. Everyone else is a step below, as we saw. If Mayweather wants to challenge himself at, at 38, it's going to have to be up in those larger weight classes. He may have lost some of the quickness, some of the athleticism that he has, but he hasn't lost the mindset. You know, him and Floyd Mayweather Jr. may be the two smartest fighters in the whole right. sport. And he hasn't lost the boldness because, look, talk about daring to be great. At almost 50, going after the most dangerous puncher in the whole sport, a fight he doesn't have to take, but he wants to see how great he can be and push that legacy out. He's old school and more than one way, and this is an excellent fight. Thanks, Joe. Kickboxing remains a big part of A.B. Han's life. He still teaches a class in El Paso with his father. That's not always a good thing, though, for his boxing trainer, Louis Burke, who says each week he's got to work on correcting the errors in the boxing gym. He says A.B. stands up too tall, keeps his weight on his back leg, which is good for kickboxing, but not always good inside the boxing ring. Your son improved a 2-0 on tonight's undercard. Antonio Jr., what kind of fighter is he? He's a fan-friendly fighter, man. He sits in there, he put his chest in the, in the fight, he's not afraid to take chances, and I love it because he let his hands go. Very few people has what he has. 10-fight win streak in pretty much the best division in the entire sport. He's also got some money in the bank in terms of being a company man, right? It's not his fault that UFC 209 fell apart. He was there and ready. It wasn't his fault per se while doing UFC PR work ahead of 223, he had a freak injury. He's got a time right now that's very delicate. And I say he's 34 and not getting any younger. And if he accepts a fight when he does come back that isn't on the very, very upper top level and loses, he could lose everything he's currently standing on right now. So if I'm Tony Ferguson, if I'm El Kukui, if you're watching this right now, bro, <laughs> well, you know he is. I act like a superstar. And these days in the UFC, superstars act out and they get away with it if they can move the product. I, try, I test the power of my brand and I'm here for two fights only. The winner of Habib Connor 
And if GSP slides in there and takes that yeah. away from me, that's a good point. He fights that. the winner of Nate and Dustin, but he does it for an interim title. Now, normally that's crap, and I say Second get, get rid of title. these. This two is a time. time, time this this is a time where I say he's the most deserving in the division, and he only does that for main event money. Yeah. And you know how you do that, by the way? Here's your plan, Tony. You crash the cage at 229. You go all towards sorts of pro wrestling. You don't tell him you're going to do it, but you run in there and make a scene. Shoot for the shoot for the stars, right? <laughs> if you settle in on the clouds, because that's what the stars are showing you is the behavior that gets stuff done in this business.